Anatomy is always a boring part for many students and I'm just hoping to make it simplified. I hope you like it. Enjoy. First of all, we are going to talk about the spaces which actually contain fat. So, there you go. Which are the spaces which contain fat? So, this is the parapharyngeal space, maybe the most famous space there is in the neck. Uh, but we often overlook the other spaces. For example, this is the retro maxillary space, often clubbed with the buccal space, which I'm drawing right here. So these are the spaces which are really important because if you have some tumor here, for example, if you have some uh, sp spread along the perineural nerves and uh, maybe some tumor, you will see it against these spaces if there is a buccal carcinoma somewhere cheek carcinoma you'll see them obliterating these spaces so it's important that you know about them so at first i'm just going to mention them so one of them i told you is the pharyngeal uh, space sorry about the spelling uh, another one is the retro maxillary fat space and the last but not the least is the buccal space now once we're done with that uh, what we're left with is actually easy peasy things for example we have uh, the bigger space which is this parotid space and the crazy thing about parotid space is this has this superficial lobe at the same time if you see this has this deep lobe if you see this deep lobe it's kind of trying to abut the parapharyngeal space it's kind of like trying to tell it hey let me go more grow more if it grows more if you can imagine it will actually kind of uh, push uh, the uh, space outside you know if it actually grows and that's how you will be able to see it another space which um, you know, you can talk about it, not uh, often though, it's this masticator's uh, space. And uh, and then masseter muscle, so, and temporalis, if you go up. All of them combined will form the masticator, that's how you will chew. I will just uh, try to I think it's, you still can make out what I have written, parapharyngeal, but I will just, uh, you know, write it in parapharyngeal. Got it. So once that's been done, we, we can think about these other spaces. Uh, we need another, okay. So this one right here is the pre-vertebral space. All right. And the one which is anterior to it, uh, and the one which is uh, medial to um, to the pharyngeal space is actually mucosal space, pharyngeal mucosal space. Okay, so there where you will have fossa, frozen miller, and uh, other things abutting them. One more space which we haven't really talked about yet is this. This is actually a carotid space okay. and I know it's a weird looking pin I chose chose that so that's a character space if you look carefully at this tiny thing it's actually a bone which is actually a styloid bone now this spila styloid bone you had known during your first year of uh, uh, medical school but if it increases it you will turn into eagle no not really but that's what it's called eagle syndrome oh it looks like a hell by the but anyway it will impinge on the swelling and that's how you get a eagle syndrome but uh, those were the good old days weren't there so anyway so with this styloid bone it actually separates uh, the some people say the parapharyngeal space into the pre styloid and post styloid and uh, some people say this carotid space is nothing but the post styloid space which actually 
would be fine if you want to comp if you love complicating life there are two types of people there are one who like to segregate things and learn there are other people who like to you know combine things and learn i'm the later one i would really stick with the character space as a different space so what i'm drawing with the purple is actually a para vertebral space um, which is the actually paraspinal muscles which are posterior to the vertebra one of them will come under the category of supra hyoid and neck spaces so most important of this would be paraphalangeal space obviously because that's like the, if, if if you have if you want to know like if you if someone asks you what is the key space when it comes to supra hyoid uh, next space you can always say it's paraphrangeal space now some people also say the retropharyngeal space itself is divided uh, so let me let me just zoom it in. so some people say this is the retropharyngeal space and in behind that you have a prevertebral space and in front of that you have the I'm going to write it in the color. Uh, you know, this mucosa. So this becomes pharyngeal space. Some people say, like, there is actually a uh, divide, is actually uh, retro pharyngeal space. And this is the, the one which is behind it. Uh, I'm not able to do it. Okay, this is actually a danger space uh, in between them there is actually this fascia and there have been a study by anatomy people uh, and this fascia actually exists but it is very thin thin to see uh, by ct or mr so because it uh, kind of uh, extends still mediastinum so there you go that's a complete uh, overview of the suprahyoid neck spaces. This fascia is actually called alar fascia and uh, I was telling you that there has been a study in 2015 and the technique is actually called as a plastination technique. So in plastination technique they actually uh, used to finely you know dissect fascias and uh, know about it more you can read it about it more later. So this actually exists Alar fascia, so yeah, so which is which divides actually the retropharyngeal space from the danger space. Now let me just uh, remove this so that I keep scrolling forward. So just take some time. I'm just drawing uh, the buccal space. Supraheart spaces, the masticator space, carotid, paravertebral, what do we stuff? That's not about every damn thing. So here we are going to just talk about a bit. Uh, this is actually a submandibular space, and uh, this again the carotid space. This is the paravertebral, divertebral, pharyngeal. All that thing is up there. But at the same time, we have other spaces which are now coming up. For example, this is the posterior cervical space, this whole, whole bit of it. And uh, uh, at the same time, you need to look at this also. This is epiglottis and these are valliculae, these two small, small things. Okay. And this was posterior cervical. Mm -hmm. 
anti-SRVs. Uh, you, you might be wondering, the, like, where is the anti-SRVs? The more you will scroll down, you will see that. Okay. okay, now let me just run this one. So this was a valicular, epiglottis, carotid, uh, submandibular, and the posterior cervical space. Voila! Again, now what you have here is a carotid space. Then you have a posterior cervical space. Now you have the anterior cervical space. See the fact? This one is the muscles, strap muscles. And uh, this is a cartilage. This is actually a thyroid cartilage. Okay. And what you are actually seeing, um, which is here, is where fish bones and all get stuck. This is a, these are actually piriform sinuses. Two of them. Cool. Now let's scroll down. Now I'm just going to remove this piriform sinuses, thyroid cartilage, trap muscles, carotid space, everything. Voila. Let's scroll down. Now here what we have here is a true vocal cord and you have these bones which has cricoid noid, noid bones which is and this is the posterior the small part of it is the cricoid as more you go down you will able to see the full, full ring of cricoid this is again the thyroid cartilage and uh, that's a uh, carotid space again which i'm going to mark it here and again you have the posterior uh, cervical space and anterior cervical space and again you will have the strap muscles at the same time you have the prevertebral space and the paravertebral space in between them again you have uh, the space which we're talking about the danger space uh, running through them the retroferential space Retention space which we have talked about in detail now I'm just going to remove the danger space and the trochal cord, thyroid cartilage, retinoid and other things. Voila. Let's scroll down. Now here what we see, we are seeing is actually, uh, this is the thyroid gland, uh, trachea which is behind it. Again, we just can revise what we have learned, the prevertebral space, the paravertebral space, uh, not much of anterior cervical space, you see, we see still the strap muscles going down. Now, this is almost the end of the next spaces, you see the scapula coming up, and uh, you also see the medial end of clavicles. So yeah, so this kind of, uh, you know, wraps up our next phases. The most important part was the superior part, which was more deeper. This is more superficial, and you just need to know uh, what and what it is. Again, the carotid space. Okay. Cool. Um, now I'm just going to remove the strap muscles, the thyroid, carotid, scapula parameters spaces voila and let's scroll down and finish this up i hope you liked it thank you Ta -da 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 -da.